Okay, so with the Houthi uh, attacks escalating in the Red Sea and preventing that safe passage through the Suez Canal, container ships are now diverting to the southern tip of Africa through the Cape of Good Hope. You can see that on the map there. This detour is likely going to impact cargo ships having to sail longer routes. That's going to drive freight rates higher, delay the global supply chain. So I want to bring in someone who has their finger on the pulse of the global supply chain amidst this conflict in the Red Sea. The Freighto CEO, Steve Schreiber, joins me now in a Fox Business exclusive. Uh, so good to see you. I want to start with what you're hearing from customers. You know, what are their concerns? Of course, this is a, a very quickly evolving situation. What are you hearing from them right now? Well, the main concern, Kelly, in a situation like this is delays. Um, and with the delays, also reduce capacity, because if the ships are taking a longer uh, route, that means they can do fewer uh, you know, trips per year. Um, having said that, um, the fortunate thing is this is after the uh, holiday shipping season. So we're after peak season. And also the network this year is actually not particularly uh, busy. So unlike the last time the Suez Canal was, was blocked you know, during COVID, when the network was very, very stressed, um, our freight loss data does show now that there is a spare capacity. And so the network probably will be able to cope with this, uh, this huge diversion, even though it adds time and reduces capacity. Well, it's a great point that you bring up that we are past that very, very heightened uh, season when everyone's ordering everything on Amazon, myself included, for the holidays. So I do want to ask you, though, Grady just mentioned Maersk, uh, another company, has started to or plans to go through the Red Sea again. But for those companies that are diverting, that are taking that longer route, what are you seeing in terms of potential uptick in shipping costs? Well, first of all, the Musk announcement, I believe, was before yesterday's attack on uh, an MSC container ship. So everybody's rethinking this day by day as the situation evolves. Uh, still at least 50% of the uh, ships that are uh, scheduled to uh, go through the Suez Canal are diverting. Uh, and that's changing in, in you know each day as things uh, evolve. In terms of pricing, um, on the Freighters Terminal, you can see that the FPX 11 index, that's the index which uh, tracks the Suez route from China to Europe, is up about 30% uh, since November. Um, and although 30% sounds like a big increase, um, shipping rates are very volatile. During COVID, we saw rates increase by more than 1,000%. So that is still a relatively moderate uh, increase in shipping prices. You know, I want to ask a follow-up there because, uh, to your point, that w that announcement was made before the attack happened yesterday, and of course, this situation is continuing to evolve. Is there any concern then that your clients have to have a lack of transparency and messaging with their own clients about how long things are going to take and kind of that that dance, right? Because everyone wants things immediately, and if you're not going to give it to me, I'm going to go somewhere else. How do you think they're going to be able to navigate that? Yeah, I mean, it's, as you said uh, correctly in the introduction, it's an evolving situation, and nobody really knows what's next. I mean, the it's worth pointing out that the attack uh, yesterday was on a, a Swiss a ship, MSC is the biggest container uh, liner in the world. Uh, it's based in Switzerland, and it was sailing from Saudi Arabia to Pakistan, which is not an obvious uh, target for Houthi uh, rebels. So nobody really knows uh, what's next, which is kind of scary, especially for the crews who, who are sailing through the Red Sea. Um, and, you know, what customers do in this case is they look for alternatives. And, and we're a digital platform, so us and other digital platforms really uh, play a key role in, in providing alternatives. So, for example, if people are sending a thousand laptops by ocean, maybe they send uh, another 50 or 100 by air in order to get it there quicker. Uh, so they're looking for uh, alternatives to get at least some of the goods uh, more quickly uh, in case the goods in the sea get delayed by a couple of weeks due to going around uh, Africa, or even more, you know, sometimes a vessel can already be in the Red Sea and then decide to, um, you know, to go back. So customers are looking for alternatives. Unfortunately, the industry is more digitized than it was five years ago. And so it's easier to make agile choices um, as things evolve. Uh, you know, I want to ask about how this dynamic also meshes with what's going on that we're seeing in the Panama Canal. We're seeing a drought, and that's also causing ships to to divert, to take longer. 
last year or a year, you know, we, we were dealing with sort of the, the back end of the shipping or uh, supply chain crisis. I was standing outside the L.A. ports. It felt like every single day reporting on the fact that, uh, you know, we had that long line of ships. And I was recently speaking to the L.A. port director, and he's saying we are seeing folks start to divert some of the cargo to the LA ports and actually get it into the country in the western side of of the the country. What's the tipping point for you? Where okay, we have enough capacity, uh, but it seems like everything is okay right now. Where does that tipping point, when you have these two dynamics come together, where we could see something that moves us more towards what we saw in that supply chain crisis? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, you're quite right. There's an interaction between the Panama Canal and the Suez Canal, because if you're going from Asia to the uh, east coast of the Americas, um, then your first choice is the Panama Canal, the Pacific Ocean, followed by the Panama Canal. And with the drought there, some of the ships were being diverted just uh, two or three weeks ago to the Suez Canal, which is sort of the second best uh, route. And of course, that route is looking terrible right now. Uh, the fortunate thing is that there has been some, uh, some good rain in Panama. And the Panama Canal is starting to increase its capacity a little bit. Uh, it's now gone up from 20 to 24 ships a day. So that's going a little bit in the right direction. Having said that, who knows what happens next? And uh, for now, the overall, the, the world of shipping does have a lot of uh, capacity. During COVID, there were many more ships ordered and more cranes and, and more trucks. And so there is capacity. So I don't think, even though we've got the situation in the Suez Canal and we've got some uh, constraints still in the Panama Canal, I don't think the, um, the the shipping network is close to collapse now as it was, let's say, during uh, the peak of COVID. Yeah, no, it's a good point. I mean, I think there were a lot of lessons learned during that. A lot of ports companies have stocked up and, and thought through their logistics. I, I do uh, want to ask you, though, switch gears a little bit, because I would be remiss if I, if I didn't ask you this, since I have you. You are an Israel-based company and of course everything that is happening right now in Israel with the war with Hamas you know how are your employees feeling has there been any impact to your operations how's everyone doing oh, well we're an international company Israel is one of our uh, locations um, and yeah obviously it's a tense time for many of our employees in, in different parts of the Middle East and um, you know fortunately we're all okay all our employees are safe uh, but it is a tense time, and we're all hoping for uh, for more peaceful times. Yeah, we all certainly are. Uh, thoughts and prayers are with you and your employees that are based there. And thank you so much, Aziz Schreiber, uh, Schreiber, excuse me, the CEO of Freitos. Appreciate you joining us today. Thanks, Kelly.